Welcome ladies and gentlemen and fans of the Regency era. Today I'm going to show you how I made my chemise and my Regency short stays which I'm wearing underneath my Bridgerton inspired Regency dress. If you're interested in how I made my Regency dress, feel free to watch the other video I've already uploaded here. Just a little disclaimer, the way I did the chemise and the Regency stays are not historical accurate. I just wanted to save time and just wanted to look the part because I'm a cosplayer and I'm actually not into historical sewing but this was actually a really fun project. It was the first time I did something historical inspired and yes, I think especially with the uh, Regency short stays, they are my neatest needlework till today and I had a lot of fun doing this. So just let me show you how I did it. Everything you need will be linked down in the video descriptions, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And without further ado, enjoy the video. When I started my research about stays and chemises of the Regency era, I discovered that the red threaded pattern for Regency short stays, which can be found on Etsy, seemed to be the go-to pattern. And it did not disappoint. The instructions are clear and easy to follow. So after I printed out the pattern, I checked if the measurements of the print were right. The measurements of the print are given in inches, but with the help of Google I could quickly convert them into centimeter. Then I could put together the pattern and cut it out. The pattern consists of one front piece, which should be cut and fold, two side, two back and four bust gusset pieces. A few days later my materials for the stays, the chemise and my Regency dress arrived. For the Regency short stays I used linen fabric. Half a meter was enough for me, but if I had to make stays again I would make it out of two layers instead of just one for more support. Other materials I needed were some plastic boning and a ribbon. I made the chemise out of white cotton. Before I got started for real, I gave my linen a good press with my iron. I transferred my pattern onto the fabric using a pencil. Then I unpacked my brand new rotary cutting tool and started to cut out my pattern. I also purchased some linen thread, which I prepared before I started sewing. First I used a zigzag stitch and went around the edges of each piece, except for the bottom and top edges, to keep them from fraying. With straight stitches, I followed the slash lines on the front piece. After repeating this step four times, I could cut between those stitches to create an opening in which I could insert the bust gusset. I 
I carefully pressed the edges of the slashes I made to the inside. Then I pinned the bust gussets to the front pieces and sewed them on. Since I had only one layer of fabric, I also added some boning channels and sewed the front side and back pieces together. I also followed the instructions and folded the edges of the back piece over to create the boning channels in the back. This is how the Regency short stays looked so far. To create the bias tape I needed to finish the top and bottom edges, I cut my fabric on the bias, sewed the stripes together and turned the edges on the inside with the help of my iron. Then I inserted the boning and sewed on the bias tape. To determine the length of the boning, I just held it above the boning channels and marked where I wanted to cut with the pencil. Then I could just slip the boning inside the channels. First I pinned the bias tape to the right side of the stays, having the bottom edges even and then sewing within the seam allowance. After that I turned the bias tape over the edge and gave it another press. To sew it onto the inside you can stitch it by hand to make the stitches invisible or use your sewing machine like I did here. After repeating the same step for the top edge of the stays, I could prepare the lacing in the back. Therefore, I punched in some holes and sewed the eyelets by hand while watching my university online lectures.
I also sewed eyelets onto the shoulder straps and the front piece. After inserting the ribbon in the back and the shoulders, the Regency short stays are finished. To start on the chemise, I first ironed my fabric. Then I wanted to draw on the pattern directly onto the fabric but detected that I didn't have enough space on my desk to do so, so I had to move to the floor. To create my pattern I relied on a website called Miscellany, which is dedicated to historical sewing and provides its entries in English and German. I will link the articles about chemises in the video description, so you can make your own pattern for your chemise. Basically, a chemise is made out of the front and back, which are cut out of the fabric as one piece, so they are not sewn together at the shoulders. Then there are the sleeves, underarm gores and side gores. It is possible to add the side gores directly to the front and back and cut it out as one piece, so they don't have to be sewn on later, which is what I did here. After finally getting all the measurements right, I could cut out the pieces. Here you can see the sleeves, the underarm gores and the front and back with the added side gores. The neck opening will be added later to that. Now I could sew the pieces together as described on the website. First I added the underarm gores to the sleeves. By the way, if you wondered why my hands are blue, I dyed my hair without gloves. Probably not my smartest decision, but... Well, I ran out of gloves and I wanted to dye my hair, so yeah. Anyway, your sleeves should look something like this now. Now you can sew the side seams of the front and back piece together and add the sleeves. Then cut out a hole for your head. Be careful not to make it too big by mistake. I first thought my head would never fit through this opening, but it turned out to be quite large already. I also hemmed the skirt and sleeves of the chemise and tried it on together with the short stays. finished chemise and Regency short stays should look like. I had a friend come over to help me to mark where I should cut the neckline and how much I should cut in the back. Then I hemmed everything and I shortened the sleeves. Now you're not able to see the chemise when I'm wearing my Regency dress. Now we're already at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider giving a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. 
I hope to see you in my next video. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.